Hello, my name is Mark Boyer, and this is a follow-up video on this uh, coincidences of our end times in the Bible. Uh, the reality is, is uh, there are so many uh, references that it would take a, a long, long time to get through them. But I mean, let's struggle through a few, uh, a few more. Uh, bottom line is, uh, the Bible says that the new covenant uh, will destroy the wisdom of the wise and it'll uh, and frustrate the intelligence of the intelligent uh, basically because it's so simple why is it that nobody else thought of it and the reality is is people have been looking for clues to the new covenant for a couple of thousand years and uh, it says it'll be what no mind has ever conceived human mind has ever conceived and uh, yet, you follow the, the, the script, you know, uh, in, do the internet on the, the New Covenant, and every preacher out there seems to think it's already been delivered by Jesus Christ. And it hasn't. It's the promise of the New Covenant. The New Covenant will be delivered by a man called the Advocate. And it, it'll set the way for Jesus Christ's return in glorious triumph. And the reality is, is... Uh, the, 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 the wise really do look foolish at the fact that they haven't figured it out or understand the very simple fact that everything changes when we go from upholding everything spiritual to upholding everything of substance. Because there really are two everythings as the cornerstone of monotheism. And if basic the faith of those being tested can't accept that if you change from one everything to the other everything everything will change then uh, i have to treat them like pagans is what matthew 18 says because a pagan actually believes there's no such thing as two everythings okay and if we can't get past first base on accepting that there really are two everythings, then uh, everything else is irrelevant. All of these preachers and all of these masons and all of these politicians who are in testing take an oath. Okay? And bottom line is the oath is mentioned in Romans 8 because Paul says that uh, all those of the promise are being tested. Now, I know there's many interpretations of that, but my interpretation of that is that it's oath holders who are being tested. And on that, I uh, point to uh, a, a message by Jesus in John's 8, where he talks about, to, when he's talking to the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and saying that he's got a rip-roaring insult to tell them. And, you know, it's the fact that, you know, he's telling them that their father is a liar, a murderer, and a thief, and they are not of God. Now, that's a real big insult to these people. Now, they insist that they're children of Abraham, and uh, Abraham definitely was not a liar, not a murderer, and not a thief. So who is he referring to? And the reality is referring to his first cousin, Nimrod. Abraham's first cousin was this mythical character called Nimrod, who was the incarnation of Cain after the flood. He, uh, truly an evil man, okay? A murderer, a liar, and a cheat, who ruled in Nineveh, Babylon, many other names that went by. But Nineveh was where lawyers started. The foundation of the bar is in Nineveh, okay? And the bar to this day, or up till recently, swore to God, okay? All preachers swear to God. All politicians, until recently, swear to God. It's been this fixation for the last 3,000, 4,000 years. In fact, uh, it's ever since Cain killed Abel. It says there, it was at this time 
that man started swearing to their God. And the reality is, is swearing to God is uh, exactly what Jesus said, okay? You are not of God. Okay, that's what he said about the Pharisees and Sadducees, because they swear to God. Now, Jesus Christ in that box, he says, I'd love to tell you the answer, but that's the advocate's job. Okay? And the reality is really simple, and I don't know why nobody else has figured out this clue. But the fact is, is if you swear to God, you're not of God. Now, Abraham, he swore to uphold God. And that's the completely opposite thing to swearing to God. Because if you swear to uphold God, which is Abraham's trust, you uh, are of God. It's very simple. Now, the new covenant, which is something Abraham's going to explain, and you know, where Abraham's trust gets augmented. And the reality is it, it to uphold God's creation augments the old covenant of upholding God, which was Abraham's covenant, not Nimrod's covenant. Nimrod swore to God. All lawyers swear to God. All clergy swear to God. And because of that, they are not of God. If you want to be of God, you uphold God, which is Abraham's trust. Abraham's seed is supposed to augment that trust. And you do that by upholding God's creation. When we start upholding God's creation, it actually is an augmentation of the trust. It takes nothing away from the Old Covenant with Abraham. And it augments it. Because we become the caretakers of the garden which is what we were doing when we were in the Garden of Eden. We become the caretakers of the Garden. We inherit the earth as sons of the living God. That's how big the New Covenant is. All past suffering will seem insignificant compared to the glory of when somebody accepts the joy of upholding the God's creation. Now, the reality is, is 1 Timothy says, 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy outlines that the new covenant will be, no one will believe the messenger, but the one who places his faith in the messenger will be believed. Now, personally, I believe it's the law society that accepts the burden of delivering the covenant. I personally don't think it's the churches, okay? And, uh, the bottom line is, uh, neither one has moved, and maybe it's both. But bottom line is, whoever recognizes the new covenant and starts spreading it out, like First Timothy outlines, uh, will never be put to shame. And uh, the message will spread throughout the world, and uh, maybe the method of my death will be uh, from an ascension like Moses had, which because that's what it outlines in 1 Timothy 4. My message is delivered throughout the world. I am believed by the world. And uh, this is done through the messengers, okay? Because technically, uh, I'm out of here real quick. Okay? The sooner I'm out of here, the sooner Jesus Christ returns. The prophecy of uh, John the Advocate says that the Advocate, people will want to kill the Advocate because in order to please their God. And I agree that under the, the Talmud, which was a book discovered in Nineveh, a 12-volume a, a 12, a 12 set was found in the libraries of the Nineveh and, uh, back in 1850s. And it clearly outlines that uh, it's the duty of those who follow the Talmud to kill the messenger if he ever raises his head. And that's me. And if they insist that Jesus Christ died for nothing, go ahead. Because the Talmud might say this, but the Bible in Hebrews, which is a reference to the Old Testament, says that almost always a new covenant requires a blood sacrifice. 
And I'm saying flat out, if you don't follow the advice of Jesus Christ, they're going to kill me. Okay? And the only way to the new, to, you know, to paradise on earth is through Jesus Christ, who warned of a guy just like me to prepare the way. And uh, that's all I'm doing, is preparing the way. I personally am following a path of not disturbing the reed, and uh, I am diligently just issuing a challenge to the bar. All those who take oath holds. And technically, the men of the Nineveh will rise in indignation. So says Matthew 12. So says Luke 11. Luke 11 says they rise before a, uh, the harvest of bad weeds and the lamp of the body is exposed. Where we all shine on, we'll like the moon, the stars, and the sun, and everyone is saved. Or it happens after a harvest of bad souls. Okay? And that's well outlined in Matthew 12. And uh, either way, my Lord Jesus Christ returns in a cloud, uh, in full glory, uh, which is a solar flare. Okay? Uh, actually, the solar flare is the breath of my Lord. The breath of, uh, the breath of Jesus Christ is the solar wind. And uh, if you don't believe it, that's your prerogative. I am pushing every button possible for it to happen uh, without disturbing the read this way. And if it doesn't work out, well, it doesn't work out. Uh, it's not me who has not surrendered to love. Okay? Uh, I accept that exactly as to 1 Corinthians 15, uh, don't worry about the one like Adam. He becomes a life-giving spirit. Uh, he's referred to in uh, Romans 11 as the one who gathers all the fallen branches and regrafts them on to the natural tree of life. And the reality is open. We enter paradise on earth. The grand awaken uh, awakening happens. And they, if they, you know, Basically, I'm here to trigger the first coming, okay? Jesus Christ is the second coming, but there is a first coming, which is either the gentle spirit or the Lord with the rod, with, with the rod of discipline, which is a first, uh, a first Corinthians 4.20, okay? And uh, one way or the other, my Lord Jesus Christ is returning and we are entering paradise on earth. Uh, death is conquered once and for all. And on that,